Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. And this is Tuesday, October 15th. And Jeff, we're kind of winding down the season, but we still have some activity out there. We have two disturbances. National Hurricane Center is watching disturbance number one. It's now dropped to a 50% chance of development. This was up to 60% yesterday. And when we get to the models or to the uh, infrared satellite, we'll see it's not looking very impressive. So I can completely understand why the uh, chances have decreased. But it is moving in a slightly favorable uh, area of uh, an area of favorable development. Um, so we'll see what happens when it gets there. And then we have disturbance number two. This has decreased as well from 30 to 20%. And if this develops, it'll likely just move into Central America and be a non-factor. So um, it's interesting on disturbance one to see what happens when it uh, progresses. Uh, the models kind of have it going all over the place. But right now, neither one seems to, to really be too much of a threat to the United States. It's certainly <laughs> disturbance two, not at all. But uh, looking in very uh, impressive, a lot of convection there on the uh, infrared satellite. For disturbance two and then uh, disturbance one, as I said, just just not much going on there, but still there and, and moving into a slightly better environment. So we'll see what happens with that system. But the big factor for all tropical weather this time of year are the fronts. And we definitely have some fronts moving now and uh, a pretty strong one, probably the strongest one we've seen so far fall of 2024. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we got a, a nice trough here in the Eastern United States, and you know, this is typically where we see our development this time of year in the the western southwestern Caribbean. This is a little bit abnormal, if you will. Uh, we'll see if this can get its act together further to the west. If you look at the ensembles, this is for Saturday morning. Um, the European has a little bit more of a signature here with the western Caribbean wave uh, than the Atlantic wave. And if you look at the GFS, um, virtually nothing with the Atlantic wave on the GFS ensembles. And uh, a little bit more here in the southwestern and western Caribbean off the coast of Belize. Yeah, um, before so, we got started, we saw that uh, that little cluster of um, signals up there just off the coast of Virginia. And that is more of a subtropical uh, based on that, that trough that's coming through. Yeah, sorry, go ahead and finish your thought on the uh, western Caribbean disturbance too. Yeah, I just, I think we might see these probabilities raised a little bit down in here. The The big question is if, uh, how much land interaction you get here. If, if we do get some sort of surface low pressure to develop, does it does it move inland here in Nicaragua or Honduras that, that prevents development? If it, if it kind of stays off the coast, uh, there, might, there might be a chance of a, a tropical storm. You know, it doesn't take a lot down here in the Southwest Caribbean. This is, this is, this time of year, things can go, uh, things can go quickly. I guess is yeah. what I'm trying to say down there. So I wouldn't totally yeah. rule that one out, even though it has the lower chance. It'll be interesting to see if the Atlantic wave ever does anything. But, you know, the big news here locally, we're going to get out of the record heat tonight. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's 97, 98 again outside. We shattered records again this afternoon. Yesterday we broke the record by five, six degrees, um, right. 99 degrees for October 14th. Um, in Houston is just absolutely insane. But you can see this great big trough here in the eastern United States, cold air funneling south. And we're going to get an interesting kind of backdoor front. The front's going to come in from the north, northeast. And if we take a look at the surface temperatures right now, there's cold air out there. I mean, this is uh, surface temperatures at three o'clock in the afternoon. And we're talking the low 50s all the way down into southern Missouri. You can just See the contrast here. This front's going to come on south, south, southwest tonight. Kind of different of what we normally expect here. We kind of look in the plains and down the front range of the Rockies yeah. for our cold air to dump into Texas. But this one's kind of backing in from the northeast. And uh, tomorrow is going to be an entirely different day around here in southeast Texas. You can see this is the high, roughly about high temperature tomorrow. This is about 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. I'm talking 73 degrees. We're talking at least 20, maybe 25 degrees cooler than today with the northeast and east-northeast wind, 15 to 20 miles an hour, dew points falling into the 30s tomorrow afternoon. So we're talking very dry air, uh, cool temperatures coming in, and that is going to potentially bring us some fire weather concerns. We need rain. We really haven't had wedding rain here in southeast Texas since uh, around Labor Day weekend. 
And so it's been very dry. We've had the reemergence of drought, uh, especially down here along the coast and then up here in the northeast Texas. And this is not something you really want to see in Texas going toward a La Nina winter. This is somewhat concerning because La Ninas tend to be uh, fairly dry and also warm here. And so this is this is not what we want to see. And we desperately need some rain. And, and you bring these fronts down here this time of year with the fuel loads. We, we got to, you know, our grasses, what we call our fine fuels, the grasses have all kind of died here in the last month or so with kind of the flash drought we've had. Yeah. You bring those low dew points, low humidity and gusty winds. And we're going to be really close to um, some high levels of fire weather as we get into tomorrow. So tomorrow's the 16th. You can see this is from Texas Forest Service. Everything you see in kind of the yellow is a high threat and the orange is a very high threat. So we're talking, you know, definitely the Piney Woods over to East Texas, Beaumont, Port Arthur, and then across that I-35 Central Texas corridor uh, where the drought's a little bit worse out there. Um, and it's really those gusty winds on top of those dry fuels and that low humidity for tomorrow afternoon. So, you know, we have a lot of counties with burn bans in place. We have a lot of um, restrictions with outdoor burning in areas. Tomorrow's going to be one of those days to be really careful with any of those things that can spark. Because if something gets going, it could it could spread pretty quickly um, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Luckily, the winds come down tomorrow night and, and Friday, um, you know, Thursday into Friday, we don't anticipate as, as significant a fire weather concerns. But Get used to these graphics because I think you're going to be seeing them a lot as we go into the fall and winter. If we don't, if we don't get some widespread rain, and it'll take a lot. We just need an inch here and there. But if we can't get that, um, we're just going to continue to see a degradation of our vegetation. And the other thing we got to think about is all that debris, especially up here in East Texas, kind of yeah. I-45, 59 North, all the pine trees and tree limbs that came down with Hurricane Barrel back in July that are laying on the floor of the forest out in there, those things are ready to burn now. They've been sitting there for, for three or four months in the heat, um, drying out, and, and all of that kind of what we call timber litter that's on the forest floor is ready to burn. And so we got a little bit more fuel down there than we maybe would normally have because of barrel back in July. So it's not, it's not a good scenario what we're going in towards um, here over the next couple of months without rain if, for fire weather. Yeah, so um, he does bird ban and don't um, burn anything outside. Mother Nature does not need any help. Uh, there are enough fires caused accidentally, chain sparking from cars and uh, lightning and different things like that. So certainly uh, it, it does not need any help by burning outside and uh, just hold off for uh, those days, especially when it's windy, because like you said, it, it can really get out of hand very, very quickly. And uh, yeah, we are ready for some cold air, at least here in Texas. Uh, and I think up north, I think in uh, Minnesota and places like that, they're getting their first freeze warnings of the of the year. So uh, definitely some cold air moving this way and and uh, very welcome considering the ungodly <laughs> amount of uh heat that we've had in the last week it's just i, I look at these temperature maps jeff and I, I just can't believe it's october yeah yeah it's uh i mean it can get warm here it's it's interesting when you look back at the records i mean the record you know 92 93 degrees some of them the records for today were 19 or uh 2019 and i think 2015 and so you know, not that long ago, but, you know, to push 100 yesterday was certainly a, um, you know, something. But, you know, you set it all upright. We had no clouds. We have relatively dry air mass in place, dew points in the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of put all that together and you get a little bit of a west wind here. And that's that's a perfect recipe. Um, and then, you know, ahead of these fronts, we had a little weak front kind of pushed down into the area yesterday afternoon. And we got this one coming in from the north today, that, that kind of compressional heating you get ahead of the fronts. It's yeah. not surprising. I think yesterday was, um, you know, nobody was expecting 99. I think we were expecting you know, 97 or so. And today we've hit 97. We may have gone hotter in the last hour or so. But um, it, it's what you can do here when you when you have that perfect setup. It doesn't really matter what time of year it is. Um, this is why you never say never <laughs> around here. Yeah, people are like, yeah. well, it's. It's October. It can't hit 100. We've never hit 100 in October, but we sure did come close yesterday. Um, yep. It was flirting with it for sure. It was flirting with it for sure. Well, 
So we'll uh, continue the the tropical briefings as long as there's activity. Of course, we're winding down toward the end of the season. We still have about six weeks left officially, but uh, we'll also be returning to our our regular programming with uh, podcast uh, type format with interviews and and just general weather discussions and. Uh, also, so, so keep it right here. Uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, be sure to stay uh, subscribed or get sus- subscribed and turn on those notifications. Also, um, be sure to check out our blog on our Weather Insights website. I'll have all that in the show notes. Jeff, thank you very much.